Hi, everyone. Before we start the podcast today, um, I'm on tour. We're on tour again. We've got the new tour. Uh, it's called the Moist Tour. Uh, just a word that upsets people. The Moist Tour. <laughs> Let's see if there's drop off on this podcast after saying that. <laughs> uh, I will be uh, the what's what's the ninth month? What's that one? September. September, September 24th. <laughs> I'll be New York City. Uh, September 25th, Chicago. Uh, October 8th, I'll be in Fort Myers. October 9th, Fort Lauderdale. Uh, then uh, look, these are the towns I'm going to: Jacksonville, New Orleans, Austin, Dallas, Oklahoma City, Los Angeles, Omaha. Milwaukee, Minneapolis, Buffalo, Philadelphia, Norfolk, uh, Phoenix, and San Francisco. So go to uh, – where do you buy the tickets, Jack? JimJeffries.com. JimJeffries.com, and there'll be a link. Make sure that's set up. And uh, <laughs> there'll be a link, and you can buy tickets. I hope to see you out there. And we're visiting all the places that uh, we had to cancel because of COVID. So thanks for being so patient. I hope to see you soon. Let's start the show. Rhinoceroses, elephants, giraffes. Which one has the longest spelling? <laughs> you might find out, and I don't know about that, mm. with Jim Jeffries. See, I did the misdirect there because I was about to go neck or something, the longest yeah. neck, but they're all animals that are really long. How do you spell rhinoceroses? Uh, it's a couple of extra S's on the end. Yeah, there. that one definitely has to be the longest. Yeah, spelling. that was long. Rhinoceros. You invented some extra letters in there. Is it rhinoceros? Rhinoceri. Is that this? Uh, yeah. The multiple. Uh huh. A yeah, gang yeah. of rhinoceros. What do you call them? A herd. <clears throat> I uh, I'd call that a horn of rhinoceroses. Ooh. Ooh. I thought you were talking about which animal spells the longest. It didn't really even make sense. Like you, what word is the longest? No, 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 no. It's, when, it's when you have a spelling bee with those three yeah. animals, which yeah. takes the longest time. Oh, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it's definitely the rhinoceros. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the, the giraffe gets up and goes, um, uh, super, <sighs> can you put it in a sentence, please? And they're like this, can you put your neck down? We can't hear you. You're too far away from the <laughs> microphone. Yeah, they got to get those. Yeah, they, they got to get, no, they get him a big long neck uh, mic stand. The price is right, mics. Did, yeah. you, did you know Adam? And he even puts it a bit higher and he leans down underneath it like he's Liam Gallagher. <laughs> <laughs> your friend, your friend Adam Bance is having a giraffe at his wedding. Oh, really? That's nice. Yeah. Why With is the, he doing that? He yeah, said, why, why not? I asked well, him why and he said, why the fuck not? Yeah, because, and I said, all right. Because the poor animal might want to be left alone. <laughs> Nope, it's gonna get a bow tie. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, by the way, it's it's not it's not to walk around. It's for dinner. <laughs> well, I've never had giraffe. Uh, chicken or giraffe. <laughs> chicken or giraffe. I'm, I'm, like, a when, pe- I'm I like a when people. Say- I'll have giraffe. <laughs> I like when people say why not when you clearly know why not. <laughs> I don't know why not. There's just so mm-hmm. many reasons. Like we don't even need to answer that question. Because <laughs> I want to I want to do my normal normal plug of the week. Plug of the week. Okay, Australia's already sold out. Looking forward to the show. Putting a lot of effort into the show. I think I've got something good for you, Australia. So. I'm looking forward to those gigs. Uh, also, uh, Forrest, do you want to come to Vegas with me? <gasps> oh, yeah. Are when, are the Vegas, when are the Vegas dates, Jack? July 30th and 31st, I believe. July 30th and 31st, the Aces of Comedy at the Mirage Hotel. Tickets are on sale now. Go to the Mirage webpage, Aces of Comedy. I will be there July 30th and 31st. I'm looking forward to getting back into the, the swing of things here in America as well. What game will you got for us? Oh, wait. I wanted to say oh. one, one other thing. So just uh, uh, Tara. Remember the bird guy we had on? Scott Whittle, bird mm-hmm. expert. Mm-hmm. He had a project called Terra, T-E-R-R-A. Mm-hmm. That is launching, or it has already launched. And if, you, if you're if you interested in it, go to terralistens.com. It's a little speaker you put in your backyard, and it listens to all the birds and, and there. And you can hear it in your house if you wanted to get Sounds from your yard. It also goes to like uh, it gets downloaded, and they can tell what birds are there and who's migrating, and you can mm. listen to other birds around the world on this app and stuff. So that's launching. If you want to be part of the, um, what do you call it? Kickstarter. You can find it on terrorlistens.com. And then remember the gut health that's episode. That's wonderful. I could hear my neighbors fighting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in my house. <laughs> <laughs> and I know where your fucking thing is. <laughs> where you left it. <laughs> 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 and then also uh, we had Tim Spector on talking about gut health. You remember? Yeah, that? yeah, I do. Yeah. So I signed kimchi, up. Kimchi, kimchi, people. Eat I some signed kimchi. up for that Zoe, uh, uh, the join Zoe a while ago, and I was on a waiting list, and I finally got there, uh, and now I'm going to send them some poop. 
of my own, oh. which has been my lifelong uh, uh, goal I, is to send I, poop through I the mail legally. So. I predict that company will soon shut down after this. <laughs> I'm going to send them some poop, and then they're going to do the blood thing, and then and I'm going to be healthy in two weeks. All right. Do that, so. Hell yeah. Just see, wait and see. But anyways, I just thought I'd mention that because those are people we had on the show, and we like to support them and have you guys support them. So yeah. If you're interested in the bird things, Tara listens, and then Zoe joins Zoe is the other one. All right. What do you got, Jack? Today, uh, I pulled some old jokes from the 1800s. It wasn't from my old joke book. I went online and found jokes that were printed in newspapers and other joke books. Mm-hmm. Um, so I decided- This was a popular segment we already did. Yeah. Yep. People seem to like us reading jokes from the 1800s. Jim, do you want to start us off oh, with Oh, I've the, got uh, one in front of me. Yeah. I didn't know that's what it was. Okay, this is from the Irish Times, May 28th, 1892. Oh, this yeah. is part of a competition. They had people submit jokes yeah, for a newspaper Yeah, it looks like I have one from oh, the yeah, same day. Yeah, I have one too. Yeah, I think, so, I think I have, we all have one from the same Okay, spot, so the two characters are called Mama and Little Deer. Mm. Right? So Mama says, can you pass me the cake, dear, Little Deer? I, I think, I think you've had all that is good for you. That's how it read. <laughs> mm-hmm, yeah. <laughs> Mama, I speak there. how do you know, little dear? I don't know. I only think like you do when I want things. <laughs> mm. yeah, 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 yeah. It's weird because... The end. Uh, I, 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 weird. Read, I read mine and it's similar. And then he punched her in the cunt. <laughs> that's, how, that's how I write jokes, so I just put that at the end. <laughs> I read mine, and I think there's a similar style going on in 1892 in Ireland, it's, which I mean, not funny. Um, <laughs> I think this was written in Gaelic. Here we go. <laughs> Here's mine from the Irish Times. Is it a competition? Yeah, it was. 1892. Normal people just sent these in. Mama, said Johnny, can anybody hear with their mouth? <laughs> no, child, I don't think they can, replied the mother. You always should put replied the mother in jokes. Very good. <laughs> then, Mama, what made Mr. Jones tell sister he wanted to tell her something and put his lips to her, her mouth instead of her ears? The mother didn't question Johnny, but turned her attention to Mr. Jones. But that worthy gentleman made it all right by proper explanations. That's, that's not even a joke. <laughs> it's, it's, it's uh, like, uh, uh, this is like a, hold on, some sort uh, of, uh, this guy should be in jail. <laughs> uh, I just gotta, you can leave this on. I gotta get me sandwich. Okay, okay yeah. Hello. Yeah, yeah, sponsored, sponsored by Jersey Mike's. <laughs> and I've got my sandwich. <laughs> All right, I've got all, one also from the Irish Times. Mama, I bet it's going to be good. Mama says, did you thank Mr. Nice Fellow when he gave you that silver dollar? Little boy, yes, am that is sorter. Mama, what did you say? Or what did you say? Little boy, I told him next time he kissed sis, I wouldn't tell. <laughs> All right. Wow, these are all like. No, 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 <laughs> really this weird. feels more like a confession. <laughs> yeah, but Ireland, than a Ireland is a, like back then, even now, is a quite a repressed society yeah. <laughs> with a lot of like Catholic priests and shit like that. So they think mild pedophilia jokes are the way of the future. Well, this is incest. This one, right? Well, I'm not sure. I don't I know who Mister no, nice Mr. Mr. Nice Fellow is probably a priest. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mr. Nice Fellow. Well, here's a, here's a minister one. Also Did someone pay times. you off for kissing me? <laughs> I don't understand this one, but maybe we can figure it out. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, this is a, this is all dialogue. There's no characters here. Uh, the young minister will never succeed. He is too easily rattled. Oh, I never noticed. I did at Emma Harkin's wedding. He kissed the groom and shook hands with the bride. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the joke because he's confused. You meant to kiss the bride and shake the groom's yeah, hand. That's the best one of all of these. Yeah, honestly, yeah, yeah, that that's, that's the winner. Yeah, yeah. The minister <laughs> kisses people when they walk up. Ah, oh, you know, at a party when he's had a few yeah, drinks, he's meant to go, congratulations. He's, and I was just confused why they're touching anybody. And he's just like, ah, <laughs> You were confused about a minister touching someone? I want to kiss the bread. <laughs> well, they're, they're not ten. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good All point. Right. Yeah. While passing a house on the road. Oh, this is from the Daily Milwaukee News in 1870. Now, I'm surprised that Milwaukee existed back then. <laughs> a lot of news. Uh, <laughs> yeah. News, uh, we've got a town hall. There's a lake. There's a lake uh, over there. Yeah. Just found it. While passing a house on the road, two Virginia uh, salesmen spotted a very peculiar chimney, unfinished, and it was attracting their attention. Mm. They asked the flaxen-haired urchin standing (laughs) near the house if it drawed well, whereupon the aforementioned urchin Uh gave them a stinging retort. Yes, it draws all the attention of all the... Now it says D, and then it says, I think it's dicks. I think damned. Uh, I think it's uh, damned. It was like, it was like uh, it's a swear word. It was bleeping on a newspaper. They gave me a, a, a D and then five. I think it's damned. Astri- damned. Yeah. 
Uh, it draws the attention of all the damned fools that passes the road. But <laughs> Oh. Because I think there was a guy who could draw it. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's good. It's good stuff. There was wordplay there, but I'm not sure what drawing on a roof meant, so. I like flaxen haired urchin. <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> that's definitely that's a, why I picked that it's one. It's a good insult. There was a man whose last name was Rose. As a lark, he named his daughter Wild, with the happy conceit of having her called Wild Rose. But that sentiment was knocked out when the woman grew up to marry a man whose last name was Bull. Yeah, Wild well, mm. Bull. Mm-hmm. Yeah, wild well, Bull. Well, well, Racy. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, that's uh, when you put uh, names together. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like when Jane Moore married Nikki Cox and her name yeah. became Nikki Moore Cox. That mm. was funny. That <laughs> yeah. was a good laugh. That is good, good thing she didn't marry a guy whose last name was Fuck. You know, yeah. <laughs> then then she would have been. I'm like, wow, fuck. That would have been embarrassing for her. <laughs> yeah, that would. That her last name was. Send that to the time. Well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I yeah, yeah. I had a mate whose second name was Suck a Dick, <laughs> <laughs> and he just married a girl called Mary, and it was awkward. Uh, I knew a guy with the last name Dick and shit. Uh, so well, that was helpful. <laughs> All right, uh, from the Daily Phoenix, April fourth, eighteen seventy two. A man said to a preacher, a lot of religion and this mm-hmm. stuff. That was an excellent sermon, but it was not original. The preacher was taken aback. The man said he had a book at home containing every word the preacher used. The next day, the man brought the preacher a dictionary. Ding, 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 oh, ding, I ding, thought the ding, guy at home just had a Bible. That was my thought. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would have thought Bible too, but no, dictionary. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's the misdirection they got you with in 1872. Yeah, they really yeah, took yeah. you for a, a journey there. That's how you there. craft a joke. Yeah. It's brilliant. Yeah. yeah. You're, you could just say these on, on your Australia tour. Right. This is- yeah, yeah, you don't even need to write new stuff. I just read them out. <laughs> so this is from the Philadelphia Times from 1890. Yeah. It's a limerick, I, I suppose. Can't, can't imagine this won't be racist. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever troubles Adam had, no man could make him sore. By saying when he told a jest, I've heard that joke before. Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah. All right, this is from Martin <laughs> Merriman, a joke <clears throat> cracker, Rotterdam, 1803. Oh, this, this is the is oldest a, one we've read, I think. This is a bit of Dutch stuff, is it? Yeah. Yeah, no, uh, probably racist. <laughs> One said that to live quiet in a marriage state, the husband ought to be deaf that he may not hear his wife's in, imper, impertinence? The impertinence? Impertinence. Imper- impertinence. Imper- yeah, you don't want to hear that. And the wife blind that she may not see her husband's gallantries. Yeah. That's the end, huh? Hilarious. It's yeah. a, I, I think it's a version of that old joke about like the guy's driving along and his fucking wife falls out of the car and then like, I don't know, there's a bit more to it. <laughs> the, wife, the wife falls out of the car, right? The guy doesn't notice. He gets pulled up by a cop and the cop pulls him up and goes, mate, I've been following you. Your, your wife fell out of the car five miles ago. And he goes, oh, thank God for that. I thought I'd gone deaf. <laughs> Yeah. You think that's what that joke is? I think that's the. the <laughs> I, I, I think that that's a rewritten version yeah, of this joke. That's the, that's the, that's the first version <laughs> from the Netherlands. Found in cave walls. <laughs> Wait, this next joke is by Sam Spliceum. The fuck's that? It's just the guy's name. Get out of here! It's not yeah. his name. It's his joke book. Joke upon joke from 1818. Well, just, keep them coming, Sam. Uh, a medical gentleman in an advertisement informed the public that he had removed from his old station to a place near the churchyard for the accommodation of his patients. I believe a churchyard uh, is a cemetery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. they're all dead. His, yeah. his, his, he's a doctor. Yeah. And it's a thinker. Patients keep dying. Yeah. No, or, he's not he doesn't have patients? No, they all die. They keep so dying. He, so he's just moving his practice to the graveyard. That would that'd be, yeah. that'd be a good yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's just there, there was, there was a, a smart there was a doctor <laughs> with a, a smart doctor. <laughs> there was a doctor with a, a bad temper. He had no patience. Yeah. Mm. That one would get in all day in 1806. That would be a big one. This one will be a good test to see if you remember anything from the fashion episode. Um, Victorian England, 1860s. Moving in unfashionable circles, wearing a crinoline. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's because you're wearing something that's not fashionable anymore. Yeah. Or it is. Yeah. Well, isn't crinoline the circle thing? It's like, uh, yeah, it's the big circle hoop. Yeah, moving in circles. Yeah. yeah. By the way, you have that up on your computer. You had to look it up. No, I, I looked up the, the pronunciation because uh, I was pretty sure it was crinoline, but crinoline. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't saying it wrong. What is the difference between a tube and a foolish Dutchman? <laughs> I'm already laughing. <laughs> oh, wait, that was into your joke? Yeah. Oh, jeez. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
when I say this joke, I want you to uh, uh, answer me back. What is the di- okay? Ready? Okay, yeah, yeah. What's the difference between a tube and a foolish Dutchman? No, what? I don't know. What is the difference? One is a hollow cylinder, and the other one is a silly Hollander. Ah, <laughs> yeah, that's not, not bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> this this one's probably the best joke of all the ones I have from Victorian England in the 1860s. Very abstract. Why is the devil riding a mouse like one and the same thing? Why? Why? Why is that? Because it's synonymous. 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 Pretty good. Synonymous. Yeah. Pretty good. It, it's it pretty reads good. better. It reads better. It, it's pretty good until you look at the setup. Why is the devil riding a mouse like it's like one and the same thing? It's like <laughs> it's so reverse engineered. He's like, how can we make synonymous into a joke? It's, <laughs> it's terrible. It's not even worthy of a popsicle stick. Here's my Victorian England yeah. joke. It's uh Pawnbrokers prefer customers without any redeeming qualities. Yeah, 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 yeah. Queen like that. That's not true though, because they want you to come back. They they'd rather you come back and give them the money and get the interest on it. Not in Victorian England, eighteen sixty. Yeah, it worked. It worked different back then. Yeah, they didn't have enough. Is that all the jokes? I got one. I have one more if you want to. I got one more piece of business I want to do, and then oh well, get to important things, Jim. Uh, third one. Which the, one? The third one. The Mary. Mary and Cracker Jacks. Of two brothers, one served the king, the other toileted hard. Toiled. For, to, uh, it's funny, it toileted. <laughs> the other toiled hard for his food. The former saying to the latter, <laughs> Oh, I that why was do you not serve the king and get rid of your toil? Was answered, <laughs> oh, not thing. Why do <laughs> yeah. you not toil and get rid of your slavery? See, it's a woke joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's really progressive. Yeah, they're trying to get rid of slavery in 18. That's good. It's pretty yeah, that's good. Uh, All right, so one more, one more piece of business before we start the show. Um, <laughs> I think a couple of weeks ago, I uh, I was talking about how I, I, I didn't get the job for Australia's Got Talent because they just never called me back after saying they were giving me an offer. And then I, I, I took the piss out of, uh, I think it's, his name is Manu or something. He's a French mm-hmm. chef in, Astra- in Australia. I'll find him. Now, what happened was we recorded that, and then on the same day I did the Mick Malloy radio show, which I do once a, once a week. And I, I, I reiterated what I said on the podcast, and that actually came out before the thing. Anyway, it made the news in Australia. I just want to say I have nothing against this French chef. I was just having a bit of fun. You know, everyone's everyone's acting like I'm fucking at war with this bloke. Yeah. So, Here, so, do you want the headline? Well, yeah, what's the headline? Yeah, Jim Jeffries blasts Manu Fildel <laughs> and Channel 7 after being dumped from Australia's <laughs> Got <Scott's> Talent. <laughs> oh, my so God. They, they, called it, they called it, you're on an explosive radio interview. <laughs> <laughs> if you listen to it, I was just having a laugh, yeah. you know, fucking hell. Anyway, so so uh, hey, man who no hard feelings, mate. I'm sorry about well, yeah, that. Yeah, we want to have him on the podcast. And if you want to come on the podcast, we've never done an episode on cooking, yeah. so yeah. we'd be more than happy to have you on. Plus, you shouldn't be fucking judging entertainment. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Also, thanks for listening, Manu. Yeah, yeah. yeah. thanks, man. Well, thanks for subscribing, rate, All right, review. Let's, let's, right. let's start the show. No, we've already started it. Let's do some ads. Ads. Start yeah. the ads. <laughs> Dad wiped your ass for years. Your father was constantly wiping your ass almost awkwardly too long <laughs> into your teen years where you were like, Dad, stop this, and you're not my real dad and all that. No, my dad never wiped my ass. My dad, don't, I don't think he changed a diaper or a nappy or whatever. Oh, really? that, no, that wasn't his type of thing. He was on the roof. <laughs> but your dad might have done it. Your dad might have wiped your ass for years. Return the favour with the perfect gift for Father's Day from Hello Tushy. Bring your poops and pops into the future with a brand new Hello Tushy 3.0, oh, whoa, 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 modern bidet attachment. It's stylish, eco-friendly, easy to install, and will help you from help him from flushing his retirement down the toilet. And see, if my dad's always <laughs> yeah. like this. Dad, stop throwing money down the toilet. <laughs> oh, I've got an addiction. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. <laughs> Hello Tushy 3.0, but it cleans butts like a champ. <laughs> but. Like a champ. Like, you ever had someone clean your asshole and looked at them and like, that's a champion. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't stop there. It cleans itself with a smart spray nozzle, not like those stupid sprays. Smart spray, automatic, self-cleaning nozzle. When we say anyone can put this shit together, we even mean you or your parents, you morons. <laughs> what If you haven't got a hello tushy, tushy yet, I have no respect for you. <laughs> Yeah. Stop listening to the podcast, you stupid. Get one. You Dirty have a butts. clean ass. Actually, this is the podcast. We need we need you. I was saying, though, that I had to take a shit somewhere recently, and there was not a hell of tushy there because there, there's two at my house. It's and a it, nightmare. It was, it was yeah. disturbing. I hate. And it turns out the alleyway behind the sizzler does not have them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. <laughs> Hello, Tushy. It's 3.0. <laughs> it attaches <laughs> to your existing toilet with no electricity or extra plumbing and cuts toilet paper used by 80%. Think of that. Think, you know, look at 100 squares of toilet paper. Get rid of 80 of them. You read that wrong, though. This is how you're supposed to do it. It cuts toilet paper by what? No, th- this can't be right. 80%? Oh, no, 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 no. With other ads, I do that. But I'm not surprised by the good things the uh, people okay. at Hello Tushy yeah. are doing. Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. have. I am stopping shocked. Right. Uh, the next one, I expect them to be landing me on the fucking moon. This company, <laughs> this company is so good. They love Hello. So the Hello Tushy, it pays for itself. You'll probably profit out of it. Yeah. You may have to quit work. <laughs> You'll be making so because you'll be making so much money from the toilet paper you're saving. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Plus, every Hello Tushy bidet attachment comes with a 60-day risk-free guarantee. That is so good. So many of the guarantees are filled with risk. But this one is risk-free and a 12-month warranty. Dad already got a Hello Tushy on his pot. Has he already got one? Your dad, your dad, your dad's already do- using one? Mm-hmm. Blow him away. With the upgrade, Hello Tushy 3, he'll be like, I've already got one. I don't need the new one. This one's good enough. And then you go, just give it a go, Dad. Give it a go. And he's like, oh, fucking hell, my ass has never been cleaner. Things have never been so good. I think I might read a book or travel. (laughs) If he's new to the revolution, have him join the millions of Hello Tushy customers right now for a clean butt with every flush. Give the gift of a clean butt. Go to hellotushy.com slash gym for, wait a minute. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. 10% off. <laughs> oh, well, they probably gouge you with the shipping, so that's for, um, what? <laughs> plus free shipping. 10% off plus free shipping. That's for our first 5,000 listeners who buy. After that, they go up. This is a special offer for our listeners at hellotushy.com slash gym for a 10% off. That's actually for all of our listeners, so 100 people. <laughs> Hello, Tushy.com slash Jim. Give it to your dad. Give it to him. He'll love it. This is my second take on this. I read I read it the first time and I got too excited by the deal <laughs> that I had to take a moment and edit this in. You know how I am. Stop trying to find promo codes on sketchy websites that don't work. If you haven't installed Honey on your browser yet, you are literally wasting money. It's 100% free and installs in a few seconds. Ready? Installed. How it works is once it's installed on your browser, you shop online as usual, as you do. But when you go to check out and you think, oh, I'm going to get fucked here. They're going to fucking screw me. No promo codes. And then boom, shakalaka. Honey will do all the promo code searching for you and automatically apply the best one for that deal. It couldn't be more simple. And I love that I don't have to remember to apply the coupons because I've got too much stuff going on. It takes all the guesswork out for me. Jim, you were just talking about earlier that you save money using Honey. Ah, uh, mate, I buy lots. I buy everything on Honey now. I buy everything, and the promo code just drops out. Honey is so effective that half the time I don't even know I'm using it yeah. until afterwards. I look at the receipt. I go, "Oh, that that shirt's going to be 160 bucks," and then I go, "What? Fuck, 130? Yeah. How did that happen?" It fe- it feels like a rush when it's going through the coupons. You're well, like you excited just, to see you, what's going to happen. You just don't think it's going to work as well as it does, but it does. It does. Again, Honey is free. It's free browser extension that saves you money. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this podcast. I never recommend anything I don't use. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash IDK. That's joinhoney.com slash IDK. All right. Please welcome to the show, Sharon McMahon. And now let's play. Yes, no. Yes, no. Yes, no. Yes, no. Judging a book by its cover. Here's oh, the- oh I'm holding back a sneeze. You are? Are you really? I've got it. I've got it. I'm good. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's the worst, isn't it? Yeah. Um, We're supposed uh, to say welcome to the show first. You welcome know, to the show. Just jumped right into the thing. Okay. Well, <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I'm, try, I'm, try, I'm trying to uh, decide what Sharon does here. I, I, look, one of the most tastefully designed places we've ever interviewed anyone in uh, I know this because I had an interior decorate, de- decorator do my house. I know that yours has been decorated. Either you're really good at it or you've had someone do it because <laughs> up in the top right-hand corner, the books are on a jaunty level with an ornament on top of it. Oh, you mean they're like, they're uh, like yeah. staggered. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're yeah. staggered. Yeah. I learn about staggering yeah. and stuff like that. 
<laughs> and you've got the symmetrical two of the lamps on either side. Very good, very good. But I also know this. Kelly said she learns more off you than anyone else on Instagram, mm-hmm. and that's all I know. And I can't imagine uh, Kelly is watching a lot of interior design stuff. <laughs> No, I actually do follow a lot of DIY. I don't know, accounts, but, but like, but where, where do you go? That. What did you learn today? I learned that triangles are better than squares in a, in a round room. <laughs> That's where um, I learned my staggering technique. Uh, so, um, uh, are you involved in politics? Involved is too strong a word. Do you report on politics? Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, Pretty good guess right off the bat. Yeah. 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 That was a good guess. Yeah. yeah I can see. Was of... it the books that gave it away? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> um, uh, you report on politics. Um, are you a journalist? No. I'm a journal- okay. So you've written books? Not yet. Oh, okay. So oh, mm-hmm. you just. The topic said- we're going to talk. She's, an, I think, feel like she's an expert in a lot of things, but the topic we're going to talk about today is something that you've talked about a lot. Uh huh. <laughs> oh, oh, um, uh, do, uh, do you, uh, gun control? Are you involved in gun control? Wow. Oh, yeah. Usually you say hemorrhoids when we say that. <laughs> yeah, I was ready, I was ready <laughs> for hemorrhoids. That's also how I get rid of my hemorrhoids. Guns. <laughs> yeah, sh- shoot them off. <laughs> We're gonna not talk. an expert in that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know about that. All right. Hey. Hey. That's the name of the show. Yeah. Uh, Ten points. All right. Well, this so. might be very embarrassing for me. <laughs> Because uh, a lot of my stand-up routines are fairly loose facts. <laughs> yeah, you, you, the you, comments you. say that. They're aware. <laughs> um, Sharon McMahon is a former high school government and law teacher who earned a reputation as America's government teacher amidst the historic 2020 election proceedings for her viral efforts on Instagram to educate the general public on political misinformation. Mm. Through a simple mission to share nonpartisan information about democracy, Sharon launched her Instagram account at Sharon says so to share the facts straying from the political bias and clickbait. Uh, I think I wrote that in the wrong cadence, but you get it. All right. So uh, her, her loyal following of governors is now 650,000 plus strong. And they represent people from both sides of the political spectrum who look to her for truth and logic in a society plagued by bias and conspiracy conspiracy. Ugh. So uh, my question uh, is, why are you covering up Q? What is, uh, <laughs> what is wrong? What do you know? Yeah. Other than what, to date, Sharon has brought her knowledge to CNN, The Daily Show with Trevor Noah, and Today.com. Find Sharon breaking down headlines through daily news briefs on Instagram at Sharon Says So. There you go. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, I, yeah, I thought maybe you might be nervous about this. because yeah. yeah. Have you seen Jim's uh, uh, gun control routine? Yeah. That's the, what uh, you're trying to I've I've seen some things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like someone who's come back from war. Uh, <laughs> I've seen some things. I've seen some things. <laughs> yeah, just before we even start, if it, how would you grade Jim's knowledge on guns based on his gun tro- control routine? <laughs> <laughs> It depends on how good a mood I'm in. Oh, good, good, <laughs> good. Oh, well, I look, look, I've actually been learning my gun control routine again for the Australian yeah. tour, and I've been uh, watching the footage over, and I've been mouthing along to myself like a TikTok person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it, it's a bloody long routine, I tell you. Fuck yeah. me. Oh, you don't remember it all. I don't remember. I haven't watched it since I recorded it. Yeah. Everyone yeah. else, was, everyone people yell out, do the gun control thing. I haven't. What, it's, I think it's in two parts on YouTube. I think yeah. it's in like eight. Eight years ago, so it's a long time. Whenever Sandy Hook happened, it's around there, but it, it, it's a long time ago. Yeah. All right. So, Sharon, we're going to ask Jim everything he thinks he knows about gun laws, gun control, and then okay. and then I have some questions for him. And then after that, you're going to grade him zero through ten, ten being the best on his accuracy of his knowledge. Okay. Kelly's going to grade him on confidence zero through ten. I'm going to grade him on et cetera. We'll add those together. Uh, Twenty one through thirty, if they add up to that, you'll be. I guess you don't like freedom. <laughs> uh, 11 through 20, Charlton Heston, and 0 through 10, you can have my gun when you pry it from my cold, dead hands. Yeah. That's, that's that one. Yeah, so, yeah. Very famous quote. Yeah, there. I know that one. All right. Um, what year was the Second Amendment to the Constitution ratified? Fuck, I don't know. <laughs> you know what that means? I don't, I, don't, I don't need to know that, do well, I? What does it say? What does the Second Amendment say? Um, the right to bear arms. Uh, that's the whole amendment? No, there's more to it. There's like, uh, and uh, guns and stuff. And swords. 
Swords. No, I, I don't know. It's, Swords, a, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a rod to bear arms. Okay, so here, this is something in it. That what is a well-regulated militia? What does that mean? Uh, that is uh, the 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 people uh, get to fight up against a tyrannical government, and that's why they believe their right to bear arms. It's never it's never been for home security as such. Like, uh, but it's it's in case the government start coming into your house. You, do you want the queen to come through your window and take all your shit? <laughs> no, you don't, Forrest. If you're a hoarder. Get a gun. Yeah, okay. Um, when was the NRA created and why was it created? Uh, the National Rifle Association yeah. was created so that, uh, yeah, it was it was a sporting group, I believe, to begin with, which is just like gun enthusiasts that were just like, hey, you should have a gun. It's like joining a racket club or something like that. And um, and uh, it, it would have been created, I want to say, 80 years ago, or probably after the Second World War, they probably started that up. Okay. In 1934, the National Firearms Act was implemented. What was the catalyst? What year? 1934. Uh, oh, 1934. Uh, yeah. That would have been the beginning of the Second World War. Oh, yeah? Yeah, well, it was about the about to kick off. And that, was were, the were, that was the reason why? They were like, oh, the Germans are getting too much, and uh, we'll, we'll <laughs> get some guns. Do you know anything about the law or no? No. Okay. It's not, if it's not in the routine, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, in general, this is true or false. In general, gun laws are made at the federal level, but it is left up to the states to decide in the United States. Um, Versus left up true to True or false. I, I would say that's true. Okay. And when were background uh, checks introduced? Well, yeah. never in some states, but uh, I, I'm going to say they were introduced in the 70s. Okay. Okay. Um, which president pushed Congress for the Gun Control Act and why? Um, oh, I missed a question. What was the Gun Control Act? <laughs> <laughs> like, did, did, what was the Gun Control Act? I, I, I believe it's when they tried to bring gun control after a massacre, probably. Yeah. Okay. And I, I would say that would be President Obama and it would have been after Sandy Hook. Okay. Um, what is notable about how Lee Harvey Oswald obtained the gun to assassinate JFK? Um, he bought it with Dogecoin. <laughs> wow, he was so ahead of his time. <laughs> was a lot of dogecoin uh, going back then. Okay, so what was like about how he attained the gun? Yeah, how, like, th th do you know anything about how he got the gun to assassinate? He was like, I believe he was like sort of into communism and stuff like that. He, he sort of uh, sided with the Russians or, or what have you, and was something like that. So I'm going to say that he bought it on the black market. Okay. What is a concealed carry? Concealed carry means that you can carry a gun as long as it's not out in the open. Okay. Um, but you like in some states, you, everyone's allowed to do it. In other states, you have to get a special permit to be able to do it. Okay. And then what is an assault weapon? What's the definition of that? Um, an assault weapon is uh, a gun that can um, hold uh, large rounds of bullets for, um, uh, fired in bursts, not fully automatic, but semi-automatic. The rest are friendly weapons. Yeah, yeah. They, they, <laughs> Good old the the rest of them give you compliments. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, da, 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 da. Which law prohibits felons from owning or possessing guns or ammunition? Do you know? No. Okay. This is, this um, is done. I, yeah. We'll have a conversation. My, my sure. routine yeah, yeah. is what you call common sense things about guns. <laughs> I see people getting shot and I think that's silly. And I've lived in other countries where we don't have guns and I realize that it's quite safe and no one really misses them. That's where all my information comes from. Okay, a from. couple more questions. We'll just have a conversation. Which yeah. president has been the toughest on gun laws? In modern history? Yeah. Uh, just ever. Uh, the toughest on gun laws? Pre-Jesus. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll say Obama. Okay, and how long does it take to purchase a gun on average in the United States? Well, what, what state? Oh, good question. I don't know. Yeah, I know. In, I know in California, you have to get a background check, and the check takes a couple of days, and then you can come back and get your gun. So let, this is the last question. Forty-four states have a provision in their state constitution similar to the Second Amendment to the United States Constitution, which protects the right to keep and bear arms. Can you name three exceptions to that? States that do not have that in their state constitution. I was, I'm going to say Hawaii. Uh huh. Uh, I won't say Alaska. There, it'll be gun toting. I'll say. Uh, Washington, uh -huh. and I'm going to say um, New York State. Okay. Let's just talk to Sharon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll they, weren't, they weren't questions in my wheelhouse. <laughs> they were all just like, what law and what year? Bloody hell, I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not a, a red person. 
Okay, what do you want me to ask you? Uh, just ask. Tell, tell us some more stuff about gun ask laws. Ask me what happened to Oscar Pistorius. I got a bit on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, say anything else about gun laws that you think. No, yeah. I've got nothing. Okay. <laughs> if you ask me, if you ask me about the Australian gun laws and when Australia brought in gun control and stuff like that, I'd, I'd have a few answers, but I don't have any answers to these. Like, when was this legislation? When was that legislation? We're gonna learn. All right, let's We're get some learn. real answers. Though. All right, Sharon, how'd Jim do? Zero through ten. Ten's the best. Not good. Can we shoot him? <laughs> I, I would say I, you know what? I'd give him a six. <gasps> wow. The hell? What are you, are you um, he has some, you know, like there's some fuzzy gray areas about years and things like that, but some general concepts. I think he understands. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks. I'm giving him a zero for confidence. Mm. That's, a good, <laughs> that's a good. Well, I, God, this is going to ruin the one thing that I have in my uh, career. Don't, don't worry. I'm going to give you a hundred on et cetera. All right. oh, wow. That means you get, I guess you don't like freedom. I don't. No. I like to be unfree with my uh, socialized medical care like a, <laughs> like a moron. <laughs> Fellas, hey, the sport of business means demanding excellence from your craft and wardrobe. Your fit needs to be versatile, blending timeless style and comfort so that you look as good as you feel. For that, there's Cuts Clothing. Cuts shorts, polos, hoodies and crew sweatshirts are made for the man who works hard and plays hard and never settles for less. All in the sport of business. Build your performance in the boardroom. Yeah, I, I look, me personally... I've been performing shit in the boardroom because I've been wearing <laughs> shit clothes and I've been going into my board meetings and people have been like, who's this fucking joker? Uh, we'll, we'll cancel his show. I wasn't wearing bloody cuts. The bar. Oh, I went out to the bar and me cuts clothes. My performance was outstanding. Or the gym. I assume it works there too. Cuts clothing <laughs> keeps you sharp wherever the game takes you. Q Magazine even calls it the only shirt worth wearing. The only one. That's Wait, Q, is it, is it G, Q, GQ magazine. GQ, you do this every time. Yeah, GQ. Yeah, Q nah. magazine has different opinions. <laughs> uh, don't read that one. That one's a bit of a dodgy magazine. GQ the, magazine. GQ, the fashion magazine. Yeah. The signature buttery soft PYCA, that's pronounced P Car Pro Tri Blend T. It's a bold new take on a classic design, combining the ultimate blend of high quality cotton, polyester, and the secret ingredient, don't tell anyone, spandex. Spandex. <laughs> Whoa. The answer is spandex. Wait, why did they, why'd you tell someone? Well, our listeners, we're, I feel like yeah. we're all family. Yeah, we're a definitely. secret club. You yeah. can tell, but don't tell other people. This yeah. is for our listeners. Keep it, keep it secret. It's not just a lifestyle. It's not just a clothing. It's, it's office leisure apparel for the sport of business. Now, you can... You can get some discounts here. I'm assuming it's going to be something like 5%. Let me just read here. What the fuck? <laughs> I, I don't know if I should say this out loud. I don't know because this business may go under if we keep offering crazy 15% off. Whoa. Think of 5% off, then triple it, bitches. <laughs> 15% off your first order by going to cutsclothing.com slash IDK. you got to put the IDK off or you don't get these massive savings. That's cutsclothing.com slash IDK for 15% off the only shirt worth wearing. Okay, one of the things that I did do in COVID that I'm very proud of, I kept up a little bit of exercise when I was quarantined in the house, you know. I was doing other things in my life that were extremely unhealthy, but the thing that sort of kept me going was me Peloton. I ride, I, I, I'm, I'm, um, I'm Jim, I'm 44, if you want to see, if you want to race against me, I won't tell you my address, but that was the one. I go on there and I race against other people. I don't let that pesky 66-year-old woman down the road beat me all the time. Whether you're looking for some extra encouragement, structured workouts, or just in the mood for a good laugh, their instructors are on there to bring the best, bring out your best during each class. There's a woman who does the Beatles classes. Ooh. Oh, yeah, I love her. She's fantastic. She's so perky and she always tells you you can do it and I don't think I can and then she says I can and then I do. <laughs> they have an awesome music selection, so no matter the mood you're in, there's a ride for you. Plus, with Peloton, you can add a strength class to your ride or combine cardio and strength in one workout with a bike boot camp to get a total body fitness experience. There are classes for every level from beginner to advanced and an all-in-one family membership so everyone can get involved. Get started on your Peloton journey. Go to OnePeloton.com to learn more. That's 
O-N-E-P-E-L-O-T-O-N.com. Thanks, Peloton. Love you. Um, so the Second Amendment to the Constitution, what does that say exactly? It, this is the exact text yeah. of the Second Amendment, which is which is one sentence long. A lot of people think that the Constitution is like some it's like Hamlet it takes four hours to read it. And in reality, it's not that long. So what it says is a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's caused a lot of controversy. It's really up to interpretation. (laughs) It has. What do you, does does that mean? I mean, I don't even. What is a well-regulated militia? How how do we interpret that in today's? It's Ted Nugent and his mates. (laughs) (laughs) Cat scratch fever. (laughs) I mean, that's the million dollar question is what, what exactly is a well-regulated militia? What exactly does it mean to keep and bear arms? Are we talking about like, muskets right and swords mm. are we talking about an f-16 are we talking about if i can make a an atomic weapon at home if i have that capability am i free to do that because that's going to infringe my not going to infringe on my rights so they those are the two things that the supreme court has really wrestled with over the course of the united states what exactly is a well regulated militia and what does it mean to keep and bear arms so there is not one definition that the supreme court has said and now we we shall define well regulated militia the supreme court's understanding of that topic has changed dramatically over the last 150 200 years what they said in the past is not what they say now Right, right. So, mm-hmm. so it's complicated. <laughs> <laughs> but it is weird because I've and and some of the amendments in the Constitution are longer than a sentence. It seems like they go into a little more detail. This one, they're just like, yeah, just sentence. throw this in. Yeah, mm-hmm. second one. Yeah, yeah, they they'll know what we're talking about. <laughs> it's very clear. <laughs> yeah. Kind of yes, kind of yes. You're actually not that far off. They kind of put it in there because it wasn't controversial. Mm. If if it was something that was really difficult or a, a new concept, they would have gone into greater detail about it. So the thinking is because it was so widely accepted, like, yeah, of course, mm. he, people that we need a well-regulated militia. Who do you think just fought the American Revolution? Mm. Duh. Right. So because that was the prevalent mindset, they just like just included one sentence. And also it was the second one. So obviously that was like, oh, we'll get rid of the easy ones quickly. <laughs> yeah. And then like number number 26 is like hats. You can wear them if you want. <laughs> the running out of that ideas. Yeah. <laughs> That's my favorite. Uh, a well-dressed militia. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know what? I was just thinking, and I'm not saying that you, you maybe you don't have the answer to this or not, but how many mass murders were there back then? I know there was war was going on, but when when just run-of-the-mill life was going on, were there people like, was it like, ah, oh, this, this, this pub, four people were shot. That, like, well, I feel like people are more responsible. About I've it. got a musket joke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, it takes yeah. a long time to reload. You can't do the mass shootings. You have to bring several muskets and really go for it. Oh, right. Yeah. But I've and seen by the, the time you load it, by the you, time you, you load it, down. you can calm down. You go, ah, oh, you're all right. <laughs> yeah. I just feel like people were more <laughs> more responsible back then with their guns. Maybe. Also, the, the wild the, west. Also, the schools weren't as packed as uh, people couldn't read and shit. So there was no one at school. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Eesh. Uh, <laughs> when was the NRI, NRA created? I can't speak today. Yeah, NRA, to <laughs> National Rifle Association, created, and why? It was created after the Civil War. Oh. After the Civil War as a way to, you know, try to help people and maintain their, it was a recreational organization, mm. and help people maintain their skills in relationship to weapons use, but it was really more like a club, right? Like we like to do these things. Yeah, so we'll, let's have fun doing it. I was right. It was like a sporting yeah. club. So she gave you a it, ha- yeah. it happened on, yeah. after the civil war. And they were like, they were like, ah, oh, we've got guns. Keep your guns. They also had another group called gang green for all the people who'd come back with lost a foot. They yeah. had a special club. Did they? Yeah. yeah. That joke could have gone better. <laughs> I don't know why they called it the Civil War. They didn't seem to get along. They should have called it the Uncivil War. Am I right? Okay. All right. <laughs> so, so wait, so the NRA was then, was it like a shooting range or was it just a social group that they started with? 
um, let, let, yeah, me, it let me guess, were women allowed in it? Or was it just men then, right? <laughs> just the white men. All right. <laughs> just the white men. <laughs> yeah, it was not, it wasn't necessarily like shooting ranges because again, think about weapons technology in the mid 1800s, mm -hmm. right? You don't, we don't have the ability to go to a, a shooting range. Like think of how long it would take to fire 10 shots right. in the mid 1800s. Like how long, how many hours do we have to do this? Um, but yeah, they wanted people to keep their skills up. Mm. Now, what, like, okay, before the Civil War, they didn't have the NRA, and then they did have the NRA. Like, did it really serve a purpose? Like, couldn't people just get together and make their own little private clubs and keep their skills up or go shooting with mates? Like, why do we need a national thing? They absolutely could do that. There's nothing that would, you know, prevent them, and we still have those things, clearly. Right. And now the the mission of the NRA has just changed dramatically over the years. It's changed even even since uh, the JFK assassination. Their perspective on what gun control should be in the early 1960s after JFK was assassinated was, yeah, we need gun control. We don't want men like Lee Harvey Oswald to have weapons. They what? advocated for wow. gun control. I would like to change one of my answers to Lyndon Johnson. Good. That mm. was the correct well, answer. Yeah. I would like mm -hmm. to change one to Lyndon That's Johnson exactly right. Right now. <laughs> Still yeah, got a second. That's exactly right. <laughs> Give you a hundred on et cetera. What do you want? <laughs> um, in 1934, the National Firearms Act was implemented. What was the catalyst? What did the law implement? I don't think Jim got this one. No. Yeah. Oh, uh, it was so post um, Valentine's Day Massacre, which was mm -hmm. a, a mass shooting that happened in Chicago in the early 1930s. Um, and it was four men who, this was during the kind of time of Al Capone gangsters, which happened post prohibition. You know, like a lot of organized crime happened as a result of pr the prohibition amendment where alcohol was made essentially illegal in the United States. Um, so a lot of organized crime surrounding the manufactured transport of what was now illegal and that everyone still wanted. Turns out people didn't lose their desire to drink just because of the temperance movement. Mm. So four men went into a parking garage, um, shot up, a, shot up a bunch of people and use machine guns to really obliterate them. It was not a like single shot to the forehead, you guys are all dead. Many of them, like they were unrecognizable, their faces were gone. And one of the things they decided to do, the, the shooters, was two of them would dressed up like police officers and two of them were in plain clothes so that when People came by to see what mm. the heck had just happened. The two men dressed up as police officers pretended to arrest the other two men. And they were like, we got it. Thanks for checking. We, we have them in custody. And Whoa. in reality, all four of them were the shooters. It's terribly evil, oh, but wow. brilliant. Yes. Like, exactly. That is a really were, good and plan. And were they drunk when they did it? Because they were. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. It was pretty premeditated. Uh, the Valentine's Day massacre. You think that's bad? I once broke up with a girl at Valentine's Day dinner. Oh, that Ooh. was a hell of a scene. That was a massacre. Was a hell too. of a scene. Oh, no, was that, that was also no your good. birthday dinner? It was my birthday dinner because I feel like it was my birthday's on Valentine's Day that my birthday trumps it. So yeah. I, I can break up with this girl now. <laughs> we were having an argument Whoa. during dinner and I went, oh, enough of that. Okay. You should have had a friend dress up like a cop oh. and arrest you. <laughs> and like, oh, I gotta go. I've been arrested. For, uh... I guess we have to break up. I don't know what I'm getting out. Don't wait for me. Um oh. And so the law implemented that. So that law was passed and then it, it restricted fire um, use of guns in some way or something. what it did was prohibited the interstate commerce of machine guns. Because, hmm. again, the, this pre, this rise to national prominence of the machine guns used in that massacre, they decided no more interstate commerce because the Constitution gives Congress the right to regulate interstate commerce. No more transporting machine guns, buying, selling, crossing state lines of certain types of weapons. Okay. Uh, this was a true or false. I think Jim got it right. In general, gun laws are made at the federal level, uh, but then left up to the states to decide. And you said true. I said true. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how it works. Or? Good. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And no, there are some federal laws. There are some federal gun laws. Like they define what a machine gun is and that type of stuff. 
Um, but a lot, the vast majority of weapons regulations, guns regulations occur at the state level. And like you were saying, in some states like California, they have 40 plus gun laws and some states have one. Right. So right. there's a wide disparity between the philosophies of states about who should have guns, when it's okay to have them, how easy is it to buy them, how many is okay, you know, all that stuff. Yeah, I was looking up the gun laws from state to state. And, you know, you assume that there are obviously states that have lax, lax laws, but so many of them, I was like, you don't have to have a background check, no registration. Like there are, literally are just no regulations None. on anything whatsoever. And that's mind blowing. Because there's no regulation None. on freedom. Do you, do, you, do, you oh, have, do you have to have a certificate to breathe? No. No, because that's your but right. I, I have a that's driver's your... license to drive and stuff yeah, like that. That's not in the Constitution. No, 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 no. Oh, no right, one, right, no right, one promised right. that you could drive a car in the Constitution. That's your choice. Mm, I yeah. see. Didn't Texas just pass some law where it's like, just do whatever you want now? Like, yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> literally, literally. Want literally. Yeah. Uh, the do whatever you want law. Yeah. Wait, so, so we've got two laws. Uh, <laughs> first law, there is no law. <laughs> Second law, see first law. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Can you explain what this new law? I I heard about it a little bit, but let us know like what they actually say in this new law. <laughs> so, in, by the way, this is not the only state that has this law. There are other states that have the same same idea, which is you don't need a license. You don't need a registration. Um, you can open carry and concealed carry mm -hmm. wow. both. So feel free to put one in your purse and strap one on your back yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and take them wherever you want. I always feel safer when somebody has a machine oh, gun I've strapped seen, to their I've back. I've seen a guy with a machine gun strapped yeah. to his back in, a, in, a, in a, like a, a Target or something when I was in Texas once. I blew my mind yeah. as an Very Australian. unnerving. What states? So I don't go? <laughs> <laughs> Texas is one of them. Um, Indiana, yeah. surprisingly, is another oh. one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and that's why they, that's why they say... Chicago has most of the, the hardest gun control and they've got some of the worst gun crime. And it's like Indiana's right yeah, there. Yeah, it's not an island. It's like it's like like Chicago down to Gary is like a 15 minute drive. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like it, of course they can bring guns well, straight. Because we up. did a we did a segment on guns in Chicago on your show. Yeah, yeah. And to find out that Chicago wasn't like was not even in the top ten of like the most violent. Uh, gun you, crime and stuff yeah, like that. The, the number one place to get shot, if I remember correctly, is uh, St. Louis, mm. is your number one shooting town or something like that. Yeah, if you would ask me about that, I knew that way. Yeah, <laughs> we, we, we did a thing like we did this, is it the south side of Chicago? Yeah. yeah. And so I was there, what was his name? Was Dubop or something? Oh, there's Lil Baby and. <laughs> Oh, that was doo wop. Yeah, it was doo yeah, yeah. wop. There was, was little baby later. Yeah, yeah, there was a rapper who drove around with me around the south side of Chicago, and he showed me all the different places, that type of stuff. And he was packing a gun mm -hmm. while we were on TV in case fucking shit went down. Yep. I'm like, we've got cameras. No one shoots anyone on camera, <laughs> do they? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> have you seen the news? <laughs> yeah. Unless you're a police officer. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Uh, Doo-wop, that was his name. Um, uh, okay, so this kind of leads into this. When when were background checks introduced? Or I guess, is that like, was that mm -hmm. a federal or a state thing? Or how is that? Yeah, so every state is allowed to decide if they want to have background checks. So Texas has decided no background checks. Just go ahead and buy one. It's totally fine. Um, right, so just, state, just, just to stop just for a second. With the no background checks, with no, like you're none. saying zero. So if you're blind or yes. let's say if you're severely mentally challenged, you have you have the mind of a child. Are, are you a, no background check for that person either? You can have your right to own a gun revoked if a judge thinks you are not capable of gun ownership. But it has, so to, it, it has to go to a judge. So that's, yes. a, that's a process, right? Okay. Yes. Yeah. So if you're a hardcore drug addict, you're mentally incapacitated, you're a violent felon, oh, then your right, right to gun that. ownership <laughs> can be revoked. But the, the assumption is that you have the right until it is explicitly removed from you in those states. Mm -hmm. So the, the, um, the idea of background checks didn't come about until the 1990s um, when, in the, when Bill Clinton was in office. Mm. After the um, 
press secretary of Ronald Reagan, Brady, was shot in the line of duty. And so then you maybe have heard of the Brady handgun bill. There's still a Brady organization that works for gun control. Um, that was the one where so- Cindy found the gun in the safe. <laughs> <laughs> mm, yes. <laughs> um, it was a good learning episode, that one. <laughs> yes, yes. You get, give it to the, give it to Alice, the housekeeper. That's the answer. Yeah, yes. it would have been the butcher's gun. He would have left it around when he's coming over to bang Alice one time. So they, you know, before that, before the 1990s, we didn't necessarily even have the technology to be able to do instant background checks. So the the background check uh, database was created in the early 90s, and it's you know maintained by um, the FBI. And it's like the the instant background check database. Well, I, I think we did a piece on this, or maybe someone else did a piece that I watched or something. <laughs> Is it true that all records and guns are still kept on paper and not on computers because they've the NRA have sort of forced that that their hand on that one, so that it makes it harder to find things? Am I- not all records, but what they there are laws prohibiting are things that connect the databases of every state. So what they don't want and what lobbying organizations have done is created a system that specifically prohibits um, the gun database of Alabama from connecting directly to the gun database of Mississippi. That they they don't want that interconnectedness because they they don't want the um, the idea that an average everyday American can be tracked that readily. Also, the database in Alabama is just a lot of strings and cans. <laughs> <laughs> I've got an idea. I've got an idea for for guns because I don't think we'll ever get to a stage where we'll all agree, or they'll ever get rid of the Second Amendment, or they'll ever really bring in real worthwhile gun control on a on, on a whole on a federal basis. How, am I stupid in saying this? Okay, so Kelly brought up the idea of, but I still get to have a license to drive a car. Mm-hmm. I'm not even saying you have to get a license, right? If you own a car, if, uh, okay, if you own a gun, you should have to get insurance on it. And so it's like if anything bad happens, that gun, it's involved in a shooting or something like that, or it's stolen and you don't report it, then it's on you and stuff like that. That would keep people sort of in check with, you know, I, I can't have 15 guns because I can't afford the insurance. Mm-hmm. I can just have two. You know what I mean? Or you get a bundle plan, of course, right? But <laughs> but is that a terrible idea? Has anyone ever th- said that before? Because that seems like a, a sort of easy way to track people plus keep people accountable for their guns. Plus if a gun hasn't got a registration, if someone says, can I please see your gun and it hasn't got the right number on that matches up with your insurance, the same thing as a car. Because people, gun people always go, well, what's to stop me getting my car and just driving into people? Like, because the uh, cars don't kill people, people kill people. Guns don't kill people, people kill people. So, is is, is that ever being proposed, or am I just a genius? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, obviously, yeah. you're a genius. Yes, thank you. Um, no, I think one of the challenges is, of course, does the insurance come? Does the insurance industry want to begin insuring guns? Mm-hmm. That well, is the bigger question. Yeah, but it'd be like it'd be like you know crash premium, you know. Yeah. You're like, oh, you shot a person. That's gonna pump me bloody premiums up. <laughs> Fuck it all. Yeah. It, is a, it is a good deterrent from like speeding and, <laughs> and getting tickets and stuff like that. The thing is, is that no no law is ever going to prevent 100 percent of crimes. Right. Just because murder is illegal doesn't mean that murders don't happen. Right. So no, not just because seatbelts are the law doesn't mean everyone wears a seatbelt. So the argument that, well, people will still illegally use guns. Yes, they will. They will still illegally use guns, but there are then it's an additional level of deterrent for some people. Mm -hmm. And it also gives you additional tools with which to prosecute them when you have these kinds of laws. Yeah, I, I've always thought the whole, like, like, like people who, guns don't kill people, people kill people. It's, yeah, but they kill people a lot faster right, with, guns, with yeah. the guns. You yeah. know what I mean? Like that Nicholas Cruz who did the thing in Florida and all that type of stuff, he wasn't going to kill all those kids just running around with a knife or anything like that. It's yeah. It's got to be the weakest argument. I like okay. Well, and yeah. so much of your, your stand-up is the argument, just be honest about the argument, is I like having guns. I, I like, like, guns. like I, I enjoy going to a shooting range. I think it's fun. Like my friend, my friends are opening like a, 
a white glove kind of shooting range in out, outside of Denver right now called yeah, the it's Gallery. Good. No and it's fingerprints. That's like, yeah, good. Yeah, but but you can go there. It's kind of like Top Golf. You can't drink until shooting gun. <laughs> you can't you can't drink until after you've shot. But you go and you have your lane and you have people taking care of you and showing you the guns. Wait and a like, second. You can drink and after. You oh, can't. The, okay. Yeah, you cannot. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I, it's I like, believe I've shot a gun drunk. I think I went to a shooting range once and I didn't yeah, drink or anything anymore. Well, they, they won't check you at a shooting range, but if you were having a bar with a shooting range, they'd definitely have oh, to know yeah, no, 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 exactly. I just had a hip flask on me. <laughs> <laughs> One but of those like helmets it's, it's, with the two beer cans. Don't worry, it's soda. <laughs> But yeah, uh, it can be totally fun to shoot. And you shot with Rob O'Neill, and you I went shot, out to the I, range. I, I, I once, I once went shooting with Rob O'Neill. Rob O'Neill's the guy who shot Bin Laden. It's the Navy SEAL. Mm-hmm. He's, the, he's, mm-hmm. well, he's also a Navy SEAL. I know, he's trained, trained with yeah. firearms. Yeah. Yeah, you didn't just shoot him by accident, <laughs> hanging out at the summer of Bin Laden. His place. gun just went off on his hip. <laughs> but, 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 but I would like to say, for the record, so at the end of the at the end of the thing, we talked about the guns and all that type of stuff with Rob. And then at the end of it, we wanted to do a piece where we just finished up. We had sniper rifles, and these bullets were like two inches long. These big, massive bullets, mm-hmm. and um, and what was happening is we, to finish off, we were both going to shoot a watermelon. And and Rob, I don't know if he tells the truth about it. I think he did tell, tell the truth about it on the podcast here once when we had him on. But uh, I shot my watermelon, Rob missed. So <laughs> I'm just saying, <laughs> if you had me as a Navy SEAL, <laughs> this whole problem in the Middle East could have been solved a bit quicker. But if I remember correctly, he did say that those type, the type of guns that he was using, like for him, Navy SEALs that are trained or people in the military are trained, that's okay, but for someone that does no training in those guns, I think he was on that side where he was like these assault rifles that right or it was a self rifle that was on a prop like a sniper. No, no, thing. no. But I'm saying the other rifles too. Wasn't he kind of saying like, yeah, only people that are trained should have these? Oh yeah, yeah no, no. He he yeah. he sort of he he, well, he he look look he has guns. He believes in the Second Amendment, but sure. he believes in some control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, a lot harder to do drive by bow and arrow shootings. Uh, <laughs> Puts yeah. a damper on it. Uh, you gotta practice. <laughs> you need a friend with you. You can't be you can't be <laughs> driving right. and do it. You need, you need a passenger. Right. You need yeah. a passenger. That's right. When I yep. was a kid, me and my brother, we I don't know, I would probably get arrested for it now. But I remember we used to do drive by moonings. <laughs> when my brother had just gotten his license and we were like what can we do we have to drive around do something and you can only have so many slurpees in a day and go to all the different 7-elevens like he was like 16 and had his license and I was like 12 so it, we would find weddings where people were coming out of the church and we'd drive by and I'd hang my ass out the window <laughs> fun yeah. oh classy yeah. but you know one died except from laughter <laughs> Mm. Which was you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, got, I got a few chunks of rice up my ass. It's probably. <laughs> um, the Gun Control Act. Uh, it was introduced. about 14 minutes long. Thank okay. you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, what was the Gun Control Act, uh, Act introduced to regulate and which president pushed Congress for the Gun Control Act? So that was created in the 1960s after the JFK assassination. So going back to back to Lyndon Johnson. Yes, that was when they um, more heavily they prohibited people from purchasing guns via mail order, which is how Lee Harvey Oswald got his got the gun that assassinated JFK from the (laughs) from the back of a magazine. And the NRA was very in favor of the Gun Control Act. They they said to President Johnson, like in, in the news, in an interview, we don't want people to be able to get guns out of the back of a magazine because we don't want guns to be sold to the type of human being that would assassinate a sitting president of the United States. Oh, wait, so an ex-president, fine. But okay. uh, no, but, <laughs> so I imagine Lee Harvey Oswald was like this. All right, I'll buy a gun and some sea monkeys. And, uh, <laughs> it's a so, Sky Mall magazine. Of, so, no, no, the back of comic books used to be yeah. like sea monkeys, and yeah. some x ray glasses. <laughs> It'll probably work. Yeah, so some more spy that makes me more. Yeah. <laughs> also, with the, with the Kennedy assassination, we'll, we'll probably do an episode on that one day. Um, I've been to Dallas, I've seen where it happened. All the people who go, oh, no, he couldn't have done it from the book depository. Yeah, I've been up there. E- e- easy. Easy to do it from there. That there was a clear shot. Also, <laughs> also, also. But what, what about the grassy knoll? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, but also, I mean, he, also, he, he fired fuck, a bunch of shots. Why the fuck was he in a in a convertible? Right. Well, I, I asked my mother about this one. Why was he in a convertible? She goes, "Oh, back then we didn't think about it. presidents didn't get assassinated back then." 
Lincoln. What, what are you talking about? There's <laughs> been yeah, yeah. 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 France, Ferdinand. There's been people assassinated yeah. all over the fucking world. I, I, and, and, we're, and they're going, oh, we do. They, it was just a more simpler time. Also, <laughs> also, what the fuck? How 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 good was the real estate market back in the fucking sixties that a prime building in the middle of Dallas was used to store books? <laughs> Like the, if, if anything should be in a warehouse out in the fucking boonies, it's a book depository, right? I don't even know what that is. I think they keep textbooks and stuff in there. Why did it get a tower right in the middle? I know this isn't your forte, Sharon. <laughs> it's, it's just bothered me that, that people back in the 60s used to buy houses for the equivalent of $20,000 today and now they're all bitching and moaning about the kids today. They don't know what hard work is. Go fuck yourself with your cheap real estate. Texas has very few zoning laws. <laughs> so you can, for example, just have cows in the middle of your s- subdivision if you have a yard that's big enough in many places in Texas. So that is something te- Texas is famous for is very, very lax zoning laws and a favor, you know, like they just, whatever you want to put, put here is fine. Texas truly is just the wild, wild have you, have you been? Have you been to where, where Kennedy was shot? There's, no. there's a painted X on the road, right? And they reckon that like one person every couple of years dies because they it's a busy fucking road. Mm-hmm. And they stand mm-hmm. on this X and they get run over all the time. They probably should just get next to it, just put have a sign on the side. Yeah. Probably, probably not an X on the road. Because it's <laughs> stand here. Yeah, and the X isn't like really like, hey, this is there's no plaque or anything. Mm-hmm. It's just a spot with a X. Just yeah. an X. Yeah. This is where marks guys, the spot. Brains were blown out. You want to take a picture? X marks here? the spot. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's like when I was in um I don't get why people want to take pictures there. When I was in New Zealand and Christchurch, or the, I went to where they had the they had this um, memorial, but it was like a sculpture. It's all these different chairs, and they each represented a person that had died in the earthquakes there. Sure. And it's all painted white, and everyone's kind of looking at it. It's very somber. And then just someone got in the middle of it and went like this, yeah, and took a picture. When we were standing there, like, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> like, I was like, oh yeah, have you I was seen here. have you seen like the Instagram models who take like like hot selfies at Outswitch and yeah, stuff like that? Yeah. And you're like, what are you doing? Try, like, try to look somber in this picture, will you? Yeah. Or like at my grandma's funeral. <laughs> you're like, hmm, okay. Looking cute. Um, what is a concealed carry? Jim said that's when you can you what did you say? You can have a gun on your person gun. that is concealed and yeah. not, not open carry is having it on your hip where everyone yeah. can see it. So you can just mm-hmm. hide it, basically, right? Mm-hmm. And that's mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah, some, I know some it, people who have concealed guns and in, carry them around. In Florida, I thought there was like a law where, like, if um, if you if you had a concealed weapon, you're not allowed to expose it or something. And then some guy wanted uh, there was like an additional am- amendment they were trying to put onto this concealed carry, like so that I guess if it was under your shirt and you reach, I think this is what the guy said, and you reached up to get some cereal off the top shelf in the grocery store, if your gun poked out, then that would still be legal or something. I don't know, mm-hmm. but there's like, I guess there's just like. I don't know. I guess the, what's what's the problem with concealed carry though? Is just because it's hidden then, right? And we want to see them out in the open, or we don't want to see them out in the open, or we just, you know, I don't know. Well, the I mean, the problem is, of course, the matter. It's a matter of perspective. Whether it's better to see what you have, mm. you know, like I see that you have a gun. Thank you for letting me know. Or whether it's better to keep it hidden away. Of course, the downside to having it out in the open is that it potentially makes it easier to steal. Somebody can punch you in the face, steal your weapon. Whereas if it's tucked away, they don't know that you have it. And it doesn't also create the same level of, it's like you were saying, you saw somebody in target with a machine gun on their back. Mm. Like that, that can sometimes be challenging for businesses Mm -hmm. when somebody comes in with a machine gun and everybody else is like, mm, okay, bye-bye. And they want to back out of the, back out of the store. When we gig in Texas, I have a policy for my show that no one can carry a gun and we actually get the guns of the people, we tag them, put them in a bit of Tupperware, and then we go, you can get them back at the end of class. You know what I mean? Like, And people get really angry. Well, I'm not going into the show. I don't feel safe because I don't have my gun on me. You know, But I, I, I've even been in bars in Texas where you see someone open carry a gun. Is there a law anywhere in America that says you can't have a gun when intoxicated? You know, I don't know that there that there are. I couldn't say specifically. Because like, I reckon I know, that'd I be a good one. That'd be a good one mm-hmm. <laughs> if you're drunk, not to have one. Yeah, I mean, I can't say that I have every single gun law in all 50 states memorized, so I can't definitively say absolutely in this state you may not have a, a gun while intoxicated. Um, but I will say that a lot of states feel like you're. It's not illegal to just have the gun. It is a, the reckless manner in which you use it that would be illegal. 
So not so much the like, I have it on my possession and I'm intoxicated. It would be endangering others with it. Because I've gotten blackout drunk uh, once probably. And um, <laughs> what happens is when you- Just when the you, one time. Yeah, you wake up in the morning and you go, oh God, I can't remember anything. Oh, I'm a little fuzzy man. And the first thing you do, you check your phone. Who did I text now? I'm such a mean drunk to myself that I send texts and then delete them so that Sober Jim won't know what he's done. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's the fucking worst. You're cheating yourself there, mate. Anyway, um, I imagine there'd be people who have guns, they get blackout drunk and they wake up like, oh, God, check me phone. Oh, better check how many bullets I've still got. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, that that um, would be a concern. Uh, that would be concerning. Yeah. I'm, I'm, there must be. You must be like uh, people. You don't know what you do with your stuff. I always lose my fucking credit card or whatever every time I'm drunk. You know. Um, and then uh, what is an assault weapon, Jim? I think you were saying it one that fires rapidly or one that uh, fully automatic and semi-automatic, but a semi-automatic one that can fire rapidly that can hold multiple bullets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It has to, the the definite federal government definition has to do with the number of rounds that can fit in the magazine and then the manner in which it shoots. So you're exactly right. All right. That's one of my points. Mm -hmm. And the federal mm -hmm. assault weapons ban started in the year blank. I didn't ask you this and expired in the, in blank. Yeah. Did I? Yeah. So we're just why would I know that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to, I'll say after. Okay. So after Kennedy died and expired in, uh, 1976. So the federal assault weapons ban came under Reagan. Mm -hmm. Reagan ran on this, on, you know, like he was very, he was very much like law-abiding citizens should be able to own guns until he was shot. <laughs> right. <laughs> but there's no, but there's no reason that they need to own assault weapons. So that, that be, those became illegal under Reagan. And then that was later repealed when George W. Bush was in office. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I wouldn't have thought Reagan would have, but I guess that makes sense. And was that, that was that just repealed because of the NRA's pressure or was George uh, Bush, was he just a big fan of guns and he did that on his own merit? Was, was it lobbying or was it just, uh, just government? So, obviously, Bush, being from Texas, had you know, probably a certain perspective on weapons, but... What started happening in the early 2000s was that different cities like the city of Chicago started suing gun manufacturers, saying your product is killing our citizens. And gun manufacturers started running scared about this idea that they were going to be bankrupted from lawsuits from various cities or states. So as a um, kind of a package deal, they declined to renew the assault weapons ban, which had a sunset provision that, you know, uh, expired every 10 years. And then they also created immunity for gun manufacturers during that time period as well. But they did like to a kind of appease people on the other side. That was when they invented or that was when they required, I should say, child locks. Right. Like all of that kind of came at one time under George W. Bush. Child locks, assault weapons are, are back back on, and immunity for gun manufacturers. This is a little bit from left field, but um, so so okay. So the whole world knows about America and its guns, and the worldview, in my experience, just from traveling and doing comedy on top of stuff and talking about guns is that Americans are a little bit crazy about their guns, right? Um, mm -hmm. Is there any other country that has what, – what other countries? No, there are some. What other countries have similar gun laws to America? Because I knew, I knew Australia did have guns, then the Port Arthur happened, and then the guns, the gun ban came in, et cetera, et cetera. But, like, I know, like, Israel, you can carry guns, or but I don't know, maybe they have more background checks. Is, is there – let me put this question uh, – a way to please a lot of Americans – is there any other countries that are as free as America? <laughs> <laughs> so I wouldn't say that they are as free as we are uh, in Texas. Right. But another country that has a ton of guns is Canada. Yeah. Canada has tons of guns. And um, they also, but they do not have the gun violence that and, we have. And why is that? Just politeness, or what? What's what's the reason? For that? <laughs> yeah, they would they would feel the need to apologize to everyone they shot. Maybe <laughs> yes. Um, that's a great. I mean, that's the that's a million dollar question, right? Like, if why Canada, who has like per capita gun ownership, 
very similar to the United States, yet has massively lower gun violence. What is it about Canada that creates those conditions? And I don't think there's one thing you can point to to be like, well, it's definitely this. Some some sociologists would say it has to do with um, reduced poverty Mm. and that a lot of times when you have that disparity between haves and have nots, which we strongly do in the United States, um, that that creates conditions in which violence can fester. Whereas in other countries that don't have that income disparity, you don't have the same propensity to violence. This is just like perhaps one one teeny portion of an explanation for it. It, it. it could be as simple as universal health care. The fact that all Canadians are like, oh, wait, bother even shooting me. He's just going to get healed back up again. <laughs> I think you found Accurate. it. I think you found Accurate. it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, also, I will say this about the old guns, right? And living in Britain and living in Australia, um, you definitely feel safer in both countries that you're not going to die. But in America, you feel safer in a bar. England feels like it could crack off at any second when you're in a bar having an <laughs> argument and you could get glassed in the face, right? I've never had the threat of someone shoving a bottle into the side of my neck in America because I think like everyone's like, well, someone in here might have a gun. I don't know if that's real, mm. but that's how I just feel. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And Australia feels a bit more brawly. So I will give it up for the guns. Thanks for not letting me get punched in the head as often. <laughs> yeah, there's never any fights in bars in America. We'll replay so, this um, clip when you get shot. In no, a bar. but not yeah. as not as much. There seems to be I a lot agree. of pushy, pushy arguments. Like, hey, buddy, don't you like? And, don't and, you talk to my girl? Yeah, and Britain seems like Britain's always like it's like a tinderbox is ready to go in every bar. You're like, you got to keep your wits about you. It's gonna crack off the guy. And because even if a fight breaks out, only blokes with sticks are rocking up to go. Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> Uh, Which president has been toughest on gun laws? Jim said Obama. I would argue that it's Lyndon Johnson who created, you know, or who who didn't, he didn't create them, but he really pushed for the gun control act. Obama certainly was not a fan of guns, but we didn't have that kind of revolution in gun control that we had under Lyndon Johnson. Would it, yeah. would it be fair to say that guns are more popular now than they were in the 60s? I feel like even in the time I've lived here, with the massacres, they get more and more popular and people, freedom, 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 freedom. And I think with the internet and conspiracies and the government's coming to get you and all that type of stuff, were maybe people in the 60s a little bit more trusting of uh, their governments and stuff like that and therefore not as um, uh, nervous and paranoid to have guns all the time? Mm-hmm. Or is that bullshit? No, I think that's a, that's completely right. And it has a lot to do with the idea that now I, you feel like you need a gun for protection because the world is going to hell in a handbasket. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's how it feels. And that may not even be borne out in facts, but the, the internet sure makes it feel like it's real. Oh, yeah. You right. watch CNN or, or Fox News, the world's a disaster and you're not safe yes. and people are coming well, to, fear, people are fear coming to get you. sells everything. I yeah. mean, you, if you make people afraid, you will sell whatever product you're doing, whether it's a TV show or a gun or whatever. And you were talking about how the, the gun companies were saying to get, has anyone ever successfully sued a gun company? And like the cigarette um, uh, businesses, has there been any whistleblowers or people who are in the gun uh, world who have now since denounced their former jobs? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the the city of Chicago sued a gun manufacturer, mm. and there are you know like there you're not allowed to have you don't have immunity if something goes wrong with your gun like if it's poorly manufactured and it's broken like it you know something happens that does not grant you immunity, but there you know like the lawsuit against say R J Reynolds the cigarette company. It was the government suing the cigarette company for intentionally misleading people about the safety of their product. So the gun companies are not telling anybody that their product is safe. (laughs) Uh, There is no there's no um, misleading happening, I would argue. Nobody is like, this is a perfectly safe gun. You can have it around your three year old. No problem. (laughs) No one's saying that. Right. So the assumption is this is an unsafe tool that you need to protect, that you need to keep safe on your own. And so consequently, no, the government has not stepped in and, you know, sued gun manufacturers on behalf of the American people. Speaking of the government's role, can we talk really quickly? Because every every election, you know, there's the fear that if a Democrat's elected, they're coming to take our guns. Can we talk really quickly about what the president actually uh, has in terms of an arsenal to, to do these types of things? Like they can't just sign an executive order to say we're taking your guns, correct? 
No, okay, not not even a little bit. I mean, the the Second Amendment is it would be a you could repeal the Second Amendment, but what it would take would be two thirds of the Senate, two thirds of the House of Representatives, plus three quarters of the state legislatures. So it'll never happen. Correct. (laughs) They would they would all have to say yes. And a president would not even be involved in that. Like the constitutional amendment process. Presidents have nothing to do with that. They don't have to sign it. They don't have to agree with it. That's done solely by Congress and the states. So a president can write executive orders, but executive orders cannot violate the Constitution. So until the Constitution itself is changed by Congress and the states, no president would be able to come in and be like, listen, guns are crap. Signing an executive order, they're all illegal. That's not a thing that can happen in the United States. Mm. And that's like the biggest argument, really. It's people like, they're coming to take our guns. It's like, no, it's not the, happening. The, the yeah. answer is no. like more that. guns. You get more guns yeah. and everyone feels safer. It's, it's like the Cold War. The more nuclear bombs we had, no one ever fired one. It was all good. But now, right now, there's the people that are selling guns are selling a lot of guns because Biden, when Biden gets up, they, they enjoy that. They say they don't like it, but... I feel like gun manufacturers and people sell guns when there's like a democratic president, yeah. they're like chiching, like, all right. Good yeah. for business. Yeah. Good for business. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, this is more for our foreign listeners, uh, people in Australia and Britain who listen to the podcast, and we have one bloke in Italy. Um, <laughs> uh, how young can an American be to legally own a gun? How, how, how young can a child fire a gun? In some states, you can get a gun license for things like hunting when you're 12, (laughs) but you can't own it yourself. It would need to belong to like a parent or a legal guardian, but you could get a license to fire it under certain circumstances with adult supervision when you're 12. But otherwise, when you turn 18, you can purchase a gun. But didn't I see footage of, I think it was a firing range where, where the instructor got shot by a little girl who was maybe six or seven or something like that. Like, like, mm. and the parents were sitting there, didn't you? Uh, I don't want to bring that up again. But <laughs> no, I, I don't think I, I saw I that. I believe you can shoot one at a younger at a firing range at a younger age. Well, they could have been. That might be possible. Illegally. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that might be possible, but it, yes, or yes, people do it illegally. Yeah. Yeah, because you see those videos and it's like young I was girl just a or boy six year old like, criminal. I got a gun for Christmas. And they're <laughs> like, how old are you? They're like, they're like, it's safe. Um, I know this is a state by state thing, or I guess maybe it is. How long does it take to purchase a gun on average? Like maybe by state, like Jim said, California needs a background check. So like Texas, can you get it same day versus California yes. it takes? Yeah. Yes. Um, some p- places have waiting periods of 24 hours or 48 hours. But a lot of states, you can buy one the same day if you pass the background check. Yeah, I think Cal- mm-hmm. I think California is a couple of days because there was mm-hmm. it, there was a, there was a scene in Legit with Rodney, and you, everyone knows the character Rodney in Legit. But anyway, um, it was mentally challenged. He was he was sure, a, he yeah. was mentally challenged. But, uh. but we we would film the episode in the gun store, and I said I said to Blake, I said, "How long does it take to get a gun?" He goes, "Well, you have to pass a, pass a background check." And then he goes, and I go, oh, yeah. And he goes, it's 48 hours. And I go, how hard is it to pass that test? And he goes, if you can wash yourself, you'll be able to pass the test, right? <laughs> That's what the gun shop guy said, right? So we put that in the script and the guy goes, if you can wash yourself, you'll be able to pass the test. And Rodney went, damn. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't you remember when we were in Texas and the guy wanted to sell you a gun? Yeah, I went well, into a gun store. I'm not welcome welcoming gun stores. It was, it was like, like a gun shack. Shitty. It yeah, was like yeah. a shack. Or a, yeah, come on he, down to the gun shack. He, he goes, I want to sell you the gun. I want to sell you the gun. He goes, you just give me your license, and I had a California license. By the way, it was an AR-15, I think. Yeah, yeah. Sure. I, yeah, I yeah. thought, I'll buy one of these thousand bucks, AR-15, right? And I went, all right, let me. I wasn't going to buy it. I was going to get to the register and change my mind, but I wanted to see how easy it was. And the guy goes, no problem. And then I gave him. I gave him the license and he sort of looked at me like, ah, this is one of them Jew states. Uh, that's uh, not going to. He said that. Yeah. Oh, wow. no, he didn't oh. say it. No, he didn't say it. What happened was we're in the store and then Jim, because you wanted to find out the price for your routine. Yeah, yeah. You wanted to make sure you had the same price. And then and then you were trying to make all the excuses at the end too. You're like, yeah, but I'm I'm uh, I'm not, I'm from Australia. Goes, yeah, it doesn't matter. He goes, I'm not a citizen of the country. Doesn't matter. <laughs> and you're like, I'm from California. And he like took the gun back from you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he grabbed the gun and goes, give me that back there. <laughs> Like, but he really wanted to sell it to you. So, um, 44 states have a provision in their state constitution similar to the Second Amendment, uh, which protects the rights to bear arms. We asked you to name three. I don't even remember. What'd you say? Hawaii, Washington, and New York. You said, yeah. yeah, yeah, 
New York was right. Mm -hmm. All right. New York was right. (laughs) So New York, New Jersey, Minnesota, um, Iowa, California, and Maryland. Yeah. I know a guy who has a concealed um, weapons carrying in New York. He just walks around with a gun. I think I can say his name, Anthony Cumia. Yeah, he's from Opie and Anthony. I don't think this is concealed, though. This is just like, this is uh, like. This An is, additional state protection yeah. uh, to protect your right to gun ownership. Should anything ever happen to the Second Amendment, the, those all 44 of those states protect your right to own a gun. So even if um, two thirds of (laughs) both houses of Congress and three quarters of the states, again, which is not gonna happen, wanted to repeal the second amendment, 44 out of 50 states would continue to protect your right to own a gun. Mm, That's crazy. Mm, There you go. Not Hawaii though. Be careful. Hawaii, Hawaii. Hawaii, you can be aware you can seal it. You're never wearing a winter coat. <laughs> <laughs> you can't it's put true. it in that little pocket in on the speedo. shirt. <laughs> speedo, you just stick yeah. it on in your, your sandal. Yeah, yeah, you got a little sandal strap right there. Yeah, yeah, you go. <laughs> Aloha just falls out from your armpit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, this is a part of the show called Dinner Party Facts. We ask our guests to give us some sort of fact, whether it's obscure or interesting, that you don't think people might know, know about gun control or gun laws that they can use to impress people. Mm, I love it. So a couple of a couple of Supreme Court cases early in the earlier in the United States and in which both times the Supreme Court came back and said there is no such thing as a federal individual right to own a gun. Mm. And that obviously has changed now. But one one such case was the United States versus Cruikshank in which two men both claimed that they had won the election for the governorship of Louisiana. They both went through the motions of like, I've been sworn in now. I got me a cabinet. We're going to start passing some laws. I'm the governor. And the president of the United States had to get involved and sent federal troops to say, actually, we think the winner is this guy and the rest of y'all can go away. And it led to this big giant massacre, a race massacre between black Republicans who had been recently freed by the civil war and white Southern Democrats who surrounded them in a courthouse and massacred many of the people inside. And one of the repercussions of that massacre was that nine people were prosecuted for murder and attempted murder. Their case was appealed all the way up to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court said, there is no in federal individual right to gun ownership under the Second Amendment. Wow. Imagine that, like Jeez. someone debating the results of an election. <laughs> yeah, imagine that. <laughs> Crook- Sounds violent. Yeah, and, and then people getting violent about it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, that'll, never, that'll never happen they again. Used, they used guns <laughs> and there was like racial tension involved. Yeah. I'm so glad we're past that. Yeah, yes. good, we have good. moved on as a country. Yeah, yeah. We've moved moved far on past that. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. It's called freedom. So, all right. Well, thank you for being here, Sharon. Uh, yes. Sharon says so on Instagram. Go follow her. Yes. And yes. um, I don't know if there's anything else you'd like to say or promote or anything like that before you. No, thank you so much for having me. Thanks for being on the podcast. Uh, ladies yes, and gentlemen, my pleasure. if you're ever at a party and someone comes up to you and goes, do you know that I'm legally allowed to carry a gun in the state of Virginia and concealed and non-concealed? And you go, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Good night, Australia. <laughs> 